The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents The World of David Lee, starring Roddy McDowell. Peggy Ann Garner is your hostess. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Tonight we bring you a story of a boy, a young boy, growing up in a world that is searching for peace and happiness. Before we present this picture of home life in America, I'd like to leave you with this thought, this fundamental conviction upon which family theater is founded, that home life, our family life, is the most important influence on us as individuals and on our nation in general. More than anything else, it has been a weakening of family ties that is responsible for much of what has been called juvenile delinquency. But there is no problem of juvenile or parental delinquency in homes where families gather together daily for family prayer because God's blessing on a home brings a wonderful peace and happiness. Peggy Ann Garner, tonight's Family Theater hostess, returns following our story, The World of David Lee, which stars Roddy McDowell. And the voice of that fitful song sings on and is never still. A boy's will is the wind's will. And the thoughts of youth are long, long thoughts. I've heard a lot of people say that the youth of today is confused and bewildered by the world. I don't know about that. It seems to me that most kids get a lot of fun out of life. And if they are bewildered, maybe it's at the way grown-ups often act and leave so many things unfinished for the kids of today to untangle tomorrow. Yes, David Lee, how very true that is in your own world, which is the world of other boys and girls your own age. Perhaps the best way for us to find out more about that world is to meet you in a most important segment of it, at home. We'll have a chance to meet the other members of your family, your mother and father and your younger sister, Susan, as we find you now together at the breakfast table. It's a Saturday morning. Susan, drink your milk, dear, and pass me the rye crisp. Yes, Mama. Dad. Yes, David. How important is circumstantial evidence? Very important at times, son. I've tried many cases where it has been decisive. Well, I think it's contrary to the whole American way of life. Why do you say that, David? Well, because isn't this country's legal system set up on the idea that a man is innocent until he's proven guilty? Yes. And that's what I thought. Why this question about our legal system, David? <laughs> I know why, Mom. <laughs> I don't think so, Susan. I do, too. Because a lot of the kids are saying you and Mary Taylor are stuck on each other. Yeah. Uh, how about that, David? Can you refute the testimony? It's not true. Uh-huh. You went out with Mary and it made Bud Landis mad because he and Mary were going together. And he said he'd punch you on the nose. Oh, good heavens. David, is that so? I thought he was a good friend of yours. Well, he didn't say it to me, Mother. Well, perhaps we're still good friends. He's a pretty husky kid, that Bud Landis. Think you can handle him, David? I don't know, Dad. I wouldn't want to try unless I had to. But I don't think it'll happen. Why not, David? Um... Uh, He's in jail. In jail? Bud Landis is in jail? In jail? What'd he do, Davy? What'd he do? Well, they say he robbed a floral shop yesterday. I never did like his looks. He's been in lots of trouble, hasn't he, David? Quite a bit. Well, his environment hasn't been the best. Then if he's in jail, he can't punch you in the nose, can he, Davy? Not for years and years. Not unless they let him go. Then he might try. I think it's silly for him to be angry with you, David simply because you took Mary Taylor to the school dance last week? Why didn't he ask her to go with him? I don't know. 
Well, I think I'm going out for a while. Yeah, I'll be at the office until noon, Mother. Back in time for lunch. Oh, uh, Davy. Hmm? Don't you think we ought to cut the lawn today? We? Well, change that to you. <laughs> All right, Dad, but I'll have to do it later today. I'm going to be pretty busy. Busy doing what, Davy? Oh, fixing it so the Bud Landis can punch me in the nose, if he thinks he wants to. What can I do for you? Oh, it's you, Davy Lee. Hello, Mr. Badger. I hear your shop was robbed yesterday. Yes, it was. The thief entered right through that back door, David. Oh, did you leave it unlocked? Well, I... I did, yes. I'm forgetful, David. But you should have seen this place. Flowers and pots overturned, vases smashed, and over two dozen of my best American beauties missing. Two dozen, Davy. Was any money taken, Mr. Badger? Money? I never keep any money here at night, Davy. But you know who did it, of course. That Bud Landis, young thug. Well, he hasn't confessed he did it, has he, Mr. Badger? Confessed? Confessed? He won't confess anything. But isn't it a fact that several people saw him last evening walking down the street with a bundle of American Beauty roses? Isn't it a fact? I don't know. I didn't see him. That girl, that, that, that Mary Taylor, admitted that he brought the roses to her house and gave them to her, brazenly, huh? Hmm? But why would he smash up your shop, overturn things, Mr. Badger? Ah, because he couldn't find any money, see? Oh, well, could I look around in back of your shop, Mr. Badger? Look around anywhere you want. I'm busy. Flower thief, that's the lowest... David, won't you come in? Thanks, Mrs. Taylor. Is Mary home? Well, yes, David. She's been up in her room. She doesn't feel very well, David. You know the juvenile authorities were here last night. They asked her about Bud Landis. You heard about oh, what... Oh, yes, yes. Uh, but, but it's kind of important, Mrs. Taylor. Maybe she'd see me for just a few minutes. Well, go into the living room. I'll tell her you're here. Hello, Mary. I, I wanted to talk to you. Oh, David, it's terrible. I'm so sorry for Bud. I can't help being sorry for him. Mary, was he kind of, well, kind of mad at me? Yes, he was, David. And I'm sorry because you and he were good friends till you took me to the school dance. He, he said you took me away from him. Well, we know that's not true, don't we, Mary? Yes, but I couldn't keep going with him, David, because he's so, so resentful of everything, of everybody. He was always threatening to punch any other boy who even looked at me. But you do kind of still well, like him, don't you, Mary? Yes. Good. But they put him in jail, and it's all because of me, David. Maybe they'll send him to reform school. Well, uh, tell me something, Mary. When he came to see you last night, what did he say? I thought he came to make up, because, you know, we had a quarrel last week. And... No. Please do, bud. I want to talk to you. I ain't got much to say to you, and I guess the same goes for you. There's nothing yes, you could... but I have. Lots to say to you. Won't you please come in? No. I'll say what I have to say right here. What are you holding behind your back? I ain't forgot that Mr. Fancy Pants. Dave Lee took you to the dance, trying to beat my time. Believe me, he's got a sock in the nose coming for it, too. But honestly, David and I are just good friends, that's all. And he bought you a gardenia, too, didn't he? Yes, Okay. But... If it's flowers you want, I can give them to you, too. Here, take these. Oh, what? How beautiful. He gave you a cheap gardenia. Well, I'm giving you three dozen red roses. How do you like it? Goodbye. What? Don't go. And then later on, the police came here to ask you about him? Yes. David, I was frightened to death. And now they have him in jail, and he won't tell them a thing. Oh. You know what I'd do if I were you? What? It might be kind of tough, Mary, but if I felt that way about somebody, I... Well, I'd go down and see him. In the, in, in the jail? Uh-huh. Why, well, I'll bet he hasn't seen anybody that looks like a friend since he's been there, Mary. But what would I say to him? Oh, tell him that you don't believe he's guilty and that... But, David, 
if, if he is guilty... In this country, Mary, a man is innocent until he's proven guilty. And uh, he really needs somebody. Yes, he does. Oh, David, I'm so glad you came over to talk to me. Did you tell your dad? He's a lawyer. Does he think Bud isn't guilty? Well, he doesn't know much about it. But why don't you go down and see Bud? Should I tell anybody? No, I wouldn't, Mary. Not yet, at least. All right, David. Well, I know. You're trying to do something, aren't you? Oh, just blundering around. David, there's nobody on earth who could help Bud like you, if he can be helped. You've done other things, David. Everybody knows... Oh, I don't know, Mary. But you better go and see him. I'm going to talk to his mother and dad. Oh, David, they're not supposed to be very nice. And they live in such a bad neighborhood. So did Abraham Lincoln when he was a boy. Well, I'll see you later, Mary. And to think, he threatened to punch you in the nose. <laughs> My name's David Lee. All right. So what? Well, I, uh... Well, Mr. Landis, I, I'm, I'm a friend of Bud's. Yeah. Well, he's no friend of ours. Get it? He's a tramp. Uh, I knew he was in trouble, and I thought maybe if I talked with his parents... Listen, I... what's the idea? And we got enough trouble with a bunch of cops barging around this place about Bud? <laughs> so we kicked a flower shop apart and stole some roses. I like that. Roses. If he wanted to make a good job of it, why didn't he knock off some dough? Flowers. But maybe he's not guilty. And maybe pigs have wings. He's been no good to us. How many times have I told him to quit school and go to work? Earn some money for his keep. Think he'd do it? No. Tramp, that's him. Big ideas about school won't work. Now get out of here, will you? There's only one thing I'd like to ask you, Mr. Landis. What? Your buds. Father... Hello, Solomon. Why, Davey Lee. Hi, boy. Oh, okay. How's business? Oh, business is bad. Ain't shine nobody's shoes for an hour. That's all right. Give me plenty of time to practice on a mouth hall. Oh, you're getting pretty good at it, Solomon. Hey, uh, I I'll take a shine. How about it? Oh, sure, man. Get up on the stand. You want the plane or the wax? Oh, uh, plane, I guess. Uh, uh, Solomon, do you know Bud Landis? Sure. Landed in trouble, that boy, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Reckon they throwed a book at him. Reform school, at least. Oh, he's not such a bad guy, is he? Oh, he all right. Bud's been pretty good to me a couple of times. Last week, you know that Butch Kirtley? Uh-huh. Well, that Butch Kirtley got mad at me for something, and he, he was going to beat me up and started to push me around the sidewalk, and you know how much bigger than me he is? Well, I was sure taking it when Bud Landis, he come up and stopped me. He did? Yes, sir. He say that Butch, he say, choose somebody your own size, brother. And Butch say, you my own size, I choose you. Well, man, <laughs> he sure make a mistake. Bud Landis trimmed him down to nothing but a shadow, and Butch took out of here like the super chief. Man, oh, man. You mean that Bud fought for you? I say. Maybe they got him in jail, Mr. Davy. Maybe he's guilty, too, but it ain't nothing so wrong with a boy who stand up and fight for the underdog. Well, Not I don't... in my book, no, sir. I don't blame you for feeling that way. He made it, you. You know that? Well, that's what I heard. He say you steal his gal. Well, he ain't gonna have no time for gals where they put him now. Uh, Solomon, who's that kid that lives in back of old man Badger's flower shop? You know, the family that has a yellow house. His name is, uh, Peter. Peter Castle, I think. He come by here once in a while, went by a little while ago on his way to the grocery. Well, will he go by this way again? Oh, he's due. Will you tell him I'm looking for him? I, I want to talk to him. Sure, I tell him. Why? Well, just because. I'm sorry I disturbed you now, Mr. Lake, but, well, you can see why I had to talk to you now. Why, of course, David. I heard that Bud was in such trouble. Of course, he works here only from 7 until 9 each evening, so I, I don't see him until those times. But what I mean is, if you had to testify, you'd be perfectly willing to tell the same thing you told me. Why, naturally, if it would mean anything. Oh, I, I think it would mean everything, Mr. Lake. Why are you doing this for him, David? You said he doesn't like you. Well, it isn't much trouble, and if nobody tried to do anything for him, well, 
He might be put in reform school. Quite likely. I understand the authorities have had some trouble with his father at times. They haven't had anything like the trouble Bud's had with him, Mr. Lay. And, well, like I said, for a lot of reasons, it, it would be better if we could keep this thing kind of quiet. It, it might make Bud pretty embarrassed. Well, as embarrassed as he would being found guilty? No, sir, you're right there. Well, thanks again. Oh, oh, what time is it, Mr. Lay? Three o'clock now. Oh, gosh, I'll have to be getting along. I, uh, I'm much obliged. Hey, hey you Are you calling me? Who else? You're that Lee kid, Dave Lee That's right Got a long nose, haven't you? Have I? Yeah, too long maybe How'd you like to have it pushed back into your face? What's the matter? I, I don't know what you're talking about Who are you? Tim Caswell I hear you were looking for my little brother, Peter. Wanted to ask him some questions. Well, I wanted to see him. Well, forget it, see? He's not answering questions. Oh, well, maybe you can answer some. Listen, smart guy. I saw you poking around the back of Badger's flower shop this morning. That's right. And that's why I wanted to talk to you or your brother. I don't answer questions either. Except sometimes with a punch in the nose to the guy who asked him. Is that clear? Yeah. But if you won't answer questions, I'm still going to talk to your brother. And you're going to get knocked right on your ear. Now. I wouldn't try that if I were you. Well, you're not me. There. I told you, Lee. I warned you. Now keep away from my brother. I'll knock you on your ear again. Well, maybe you will, Caswell. But I'm still going to talk to your little brother. Now, Peter, let's see. Oh, here's the hole in the fence, and the tracks are right there where everybody can see them. Uh-huh. Well, we don't have to follow the tracks. I told you already what I saw. Well, if you saw it, Peter, why didn't you tell somebody else? Because you know what they do to him. He's been in trouble before. But you wouldn't want to see somebody who was innocent be blamed, maybe even go to jail. Oh, nobody would. You're wrong, Peter. Somebody is going to be sent, maybe to reform school, unless you tell what you know now. <laughs> Gosh, how can I? I'm his best friend. Yes, I, I know you love him a lot, but, but Peter, it, it has to be done. Now, will you tell? I guess so, but I don't want to. Ah, uh, wait a minute, son. Your name is Lee, David Lee? Yes, Sergeant. My dad's a lawyer here, Harry Lee. Oh, sure, I know him. <laughs> Whatever started you out on this case? Well, I, I wanted to see Bud Landis get a decent break, sir. Uh, too bad a lot of kids don't have someone like you around, instead of parents like this Landis boy is. Uh, tell me, you can get statements from everybody you've talked to? Yes, sir, they've all promised to tell. Only, well, I'd kind of like to see Mr. Lake's story kept sort of quiet. Why? Because, well, you see, sir, the, uh, there's a girl. That Taylor girl or Mary Taylor? Uh, uh-huh. Uh, well, it would be better if she didn't exactly know... Uh, yeah, sure, I see. Maybe it wouldn't embarrass her, but it would make young Landis feel kind of cheap. I think it would. Yeah, you say you want to go in and see him now? If it's all right. Sure it is. Uh, Pat, eh? take this lad into that Landis boy, will you? Okay, this way, son. He's in there. You want to go in? I'd like to. Okay. You can have a few minutes with him. Hello, bud. What are you doing here? I, um... I, I wanted to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Oh, I thought you did. I thought you wanted to punch me on the nose. <laughs> That's what I heard, anyway. You think I can't do it? Oh, I guess you could, only why? You know why. Because I took Mary Taylor to the dance? Because you're horned in. I know, plenty of dough, a car, your folks live in a nice house. You can show her a good time. So can you, bud. Are you kidding? No, and I don't mean with money or a car or even a nice home. Why, oh, Mary isn't the kind of a girl who'd like anybody just for those things. You seem to know a lot about her. 
I know she likes you, bud. A lot. Why didn't she come here to see you? Here? She, she was going to. What are you trying to do? Kid somebody? Now listen, you better get out of here before I... Before I can tell you that they're going to let you go? Huh? Well, they are. Because you're not guilty. Why, you didn't break into old man Badger's shop. You know all about it, I suppose. Sure I do. Want me to tell you? All right. Well, people saw you walking down the street with some roses last night. Then you gave them to Mary. And when Badger discovered that his shop was broken into and some roses stolen, they, they blamed you. Is that news? Well, I don't think you should have been ashamed to tell them where you really got those roses. Where'd you find out? I found out from Mr. Lake, the undertaker. I know you work evenings for him, bud, and he told me that he let you have those flowers when you asked for them. Why, they always have lots of flowers left over. You're not going to tell anybody. Because you think Mary would laugh at you? Oh, she wouldn't, bud. But I won't tell. Gee, I... Mr. Lake phoned here at the station and told them, and... Well, now they really do know who did break into Mr. Badger's shop, so they're going to let you go, bud. They... They are? When? Oh, any time now, I guess. Bud, we used to be good friends. Yeah. So what? Well, why is it different now? I already said why. Because I took Mary out. But she doesn't like me, Bud. I, I mean, the same as she likes you. How do you know? She told me the night of the dance. Why, she didn't talk about anybody but you, Bud. She'd much rather have been with you than with me. Why didn't you ask her to go? I... I got no clothes, and I... I couldn't buy her a flower. Was that all? All? Oh, listen. How'd you like to live in a house where your old man's drunk five nights a week and where your, your mother doesn't care whether you keep going or not? How'd you like to see other kids with money and cars and good clothes and all the rest of... Would you ask a girl to go out to dances with you? I, uh... I guess not. But I, uh... I bet it can be different from now on. Yeah. How? Because nobody's going to be scared of you, bud. What? I'm not, at least. Because you want the same things that most kids do. And uh, if you quit acting like you'd rather fight with kids and get along with them, why, you won't have to worry about your clothes and the other things. Why, I already know two pretty fine people who think you're really tops. Who? <laughs> well, that's sort of different. But little Solomon, the boot black, and Mary. Oh? And, uh, I think you're all right, too, bud. How... How did you find out about me? I mean, about the roses and that I'm not guilty. Oh, just by accident. Get right in there, miss. Hey, Mary. Hello, Mary. Hello, David. Bud. Oh, did he tell you? I heard that they're going to let you go. Yeah, 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 that's what he said. Bud, I... I'm so glad. I knew you weren't guilty anyway. You... you did. Of course. And when David went to work to prove you weren't, why then... Bud, hmm? where did he go, David? Oh, I, I guess he left. You say he went to work to prove I wasn't guilty. He did every bit of it, Bud, every single bit. Holy smoke. And I think it was amazing how he found out who did break into the flower shop. Well, who did? A goat, Bud. An old billy goat that belongs to a boy whose family just moved in back of Badger's flower shop. The door was open, and the goat walked in and knocked everything over and ate the roses. A goat? So Mr. Badger has dropped the charge against you, and you can walk out of here right now. Oh, gee, I... Bud, will you tell me something? Sure. Where did you get those lovely roses, the ones you gave me? Oh, well, <clears throat> I'll tell you sometime, Mary, but there's plenty more where they came from. Enough for me to wear at the annual picnic next week? Would you go with me, Mary? Oh, Bud, don't you know? Dave? Oh, David? Hmm? What, what, Dan? You better hurry if you're going to finish that lawn before supper. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, David, I don't like to keep harping on things, but if you'd started the lawn earlier, it'd be finished by now. Uh. Yeah, I know, Dan. Son, don't you think it's time for a boy your age to begin to turn his time to something constructive in the afternoon? Why, um, yes, it is. Well, suppose I just let things slide every time I had to assemble material to try an important case. Might well, it be pretty tough on my client, wouldn't it? You bet. All right. Let's remember that. 
Now hurry up and finish in time for supper. Oh, by the way, I hear they let that Landis boy go. He wasn't guilty. Hmm, so I hear. Oh, I'm glad. Uh, I'll be right in, Dad. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope you liked tonight's play. I enjoyed being in it because the world of David Lee is actually my own world, and the world of many other boys and girls my own age. It's not really a madcap, irresponsible world where a dance, a party, or a weekly allowance is the only thought in our heads. We're constantly being told that the responsibility for the world of the future rests with us. We think that we really have the seriousness, the character, and the ability, too, to meet that challenge if we ask God to help us. Right, Peggy Ann? Yes, Roddy. I think most young people feel confident about the world of the future, even though it looks pretty dark at the moment. Such faith is important in these critical times. It gets down to each one of us doing what he can, like David Lee, and each family doing what it can to make this a better world. And that means the family's got to be a unit. It's got to be the firm foundation on which we build in these stormy times. The strongest cement I know is for each family to get together every night in family prayer to bring God into their circle. A family that prays together stays together. And also, a world at prayer is a world at peace. Before saying good night, I'd like to thank Roddy McDowell for his performance this evening. Our thanks to Carol Coleman and Ted Maxwell for writing tonight's play, and to Max Terre for his music. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Norman Field, Nancy Shields, Don Bender, Charles Seal, Louise Weir, Eddie Firestone, Tim Grimm, Gil Stratton Jr., and Jerry Farber. Next week, our Family Theater star will be June Haver in Farewell to Bertie McKeesler. Your host will be George Murphy. This is Peggy Ann Garner saying good night and God bless you. This series of the Family Theatre broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at this same time when our Family Theatre star will be June Haver with George Murphy as host. Today we salute station KENI Anchorage and KFAR Fairbanks, Alaska who are joining the mutual network. Tony Lafrano speaking. This program reached this you by transcription. Is the mutual broadcasting system. <laughs>